Hey, y'all, it's B, S B. <laughs> and guess what today is? It's Friday. It's Friday. It's a good Friday. And I hope everybody is having an awesome Friday. I am. <laughs> I have done a million things today. Just wanted y'all to know. <laughs> and it's five o'clock. Listen, this is not our regular four o'clock hour, but we decided to just to see, you know, what could happen if we did it at five o'clock. So I'm I'm glad that you all are here. I'm glad that you all have um, decided, you know, just to wait a little bit, have SB come on a little later and it's perfect. Thank you so much for doing that. I just want to thank everyone for being here. Now, listen, I got some updates. Y'all know what we do on Freestyle Friday. We just basically update our week and then we share a little bit about my feelings. Remember now, I want to thank everybody who's new to the channel. Now, listen, I already told y'all at 10,000 subscribers, SB Nation or you unsolicited security boss, the show will change just a little bit, right? So, oh, I like that. Prosperous 2023 SB. I like that. So anyway, the show's going to change a little bit. So I guess what? I just checked. I just checked my subscriber count right before I came on and I'm at 9,335. So I am 665 subscribers away from 10,000. Y'all know 10,000 is a goal for anybody, everybody, you know, YouTubers, we work hard, we do what we got to do, influencing people, and then we get to 10,000, you know that is a goal. So that is our number one goal for now, 10,000, and we're 665 subscribers away. So guess what? I need y'all to share this video. I need y'all to, uh, to recommend it for somebody and continue to do what you do. Thank you so much for your support. Those of you who are on TikTok, if it's your first time in, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so when I go live, you can definitely say hello and I can say hello to you. Those of you on Instagram, again, thank you so much. You've been here for me. Y'all sharing those videos. Uh, the, the subscriber count is going up. It's been like really, really good. Y'all Y'all know Mr. Boss been putting in the work, putting all those videos over there on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Really Facebook, thank y'all. Continue to share the videos. Let's continue to have the conversation. We've been having some outstanding conversations. Y'all, y'all don't see it all. We'll be in the comment section. So any of you all, listen, YouTube family, if y'all ever get bored, come over to my comment section. Y'all should see what go on over there. <laughs> y'all need to see what's going on. Y'all can answer some of my questions for me. Well, I appreciate it so much. But again, thank you guys for uh, supporting me, sharing my videos, being here. Those of you who have been here from the beginning, oh, you're amazing. Those of you who are just coming, you know, I promise you all that I will be telling, you, you know, I would tell the new um, subscribers a little bit about myself, something, just one thing that you might not know. And I do that because I think it's totally unfair for me to uh, have these shows every week and people don't know who I am. I got to just tell you a little bit. Those of you who have been here for a while, y'all already know this. Y'all already know Mr. Boss is behind the camera. When the camera comes on, he's turning on. When the camera goes off, he turns it off. Mr. Boss is my husband of 27 years and we work together in all of our businesses of real estate. Uh, security, we work together, and now uh, YouTube. So that's my best friend. We don't mind hanging out with each other. I still like him. And that is one of the major reasons why I push for marriage. That's one, I advocate for marriage. Y'all already know that. And I advocate for men because I got a good one. So I've seen the other side. I got a brother. You know, I've seen a lot of good men around me. So I've seen what could happen. I could, I've seen a lot of good men. So I'm not throwing men away by no means. I'm not throwing women away either because I feel like I'm a good woman. Neither, neither gender is perfect. We need help. But I'm here to be an example of how marriage is good and can be. And I just wouldn't have it any other way. I would hate to be single today. Gosh. Woo. So anyway, I would say all that to, to say thank y'all for being here. But um, again, let me give y'all an update on something. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., we will have the second. Um, show for conflict resolution 3 p.m eastern tomorrow trill Daddy will be beloved. here trigger mike let me say it again trill from the crew season trigger mike will be here chantel will be here chantel is an addition uh we have hink hink will be here uh myself y'all know i'm gonna be here also and I know I'm forgetting someone oh miss Sherelle Sherelle will be here representing the single women so um, I know I forgot somebody, but anyway, no, I didn't. That's everyone. So we will be doing the second part 
of our conflict resolution show tomorrow. Now, if y'all haven't had an opportunity to check out the first one, go look at it because we're going to pick up from there. I have some more questions. But again, we're looking for resolution. We're tired of fighting. It's time for some loving and join each other. The company just moving forward. We're in 2023. It's time for us to move forward. And I hope you all think and believe the same thing that I'm believing. You know, if you over here at SB Nation, you probably do. So tomorrow, 3 p.m., second part of conflict resolution. I need for you all to be here and uh, outstanding panel, you know, just be here. So, but for now, before we actually get started, I want to say hello to the young people. I know y'all are young folks in my comment section, just to, you know, greet you all to SB Nation. I hope y'all having a good day. I'm just showing some appreciation. Lady Navoa, well, how are you doing today? I hope everything is well with you. Dr. Steele, hey, it's good to see you. Cat student number one. You didn't say number one, but cat student one. Good afternoon. It's good to see you. Prosperous 2023 is Zaylin. I love that. I love that. I am receiving all of that. Scam likely. Dust, what's going on? I hope you're having a good day today. I hope you are. Professor Plat Platypus, another sub. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, JG, what's up? JG, how you doing? I hope you're feeling good today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I think that's it for now. But if I see some others come in, I will definitely give you a shout out, give you the finger. Who knows? All depends on where I am in my topic of discussion today. So listen, I want to start with um, my week. Y'all know on Monday, Black Man and I were together. We talked a lot about um, men and women. Y'all know we talked about child support a bit. Um, Y'all know where we stand, where I stand at least. Autom we automatically know that this system of child support is not going to get any better. We already talked about it. We talked about it 20 million times. It's not going to get any better. So we have to actually change what we do, women and men. Women, I'm telling you to um, not find yourself in the position of needing, needing child support. I want you to preserve yourself. I want you to give yourself to the man who's promised you marriage. I know you may not be a virgin, but guess what? We can't live in total chaos all our life and expect to get good results. Or can we? No, we can't. So young ladies who are looking for different results, the first thing I suggest you do is preserve your body. Preserve it. Preserve it for the man that has promised you or asked you for your hand in marriage. It's an easy thing to do. Life without sex is less chaotic. You know how you're feeling. You know, if you get pregnant, you know who the baby daddy is. All that, all that easy stuff. You know, I, I uh, the easy road is always the path that I would love to take. So I'm just suggesting preserve yourself. And guess what? I know y'all probably out here thinking, ain't no man go. Yeah, they will. The one that's meant to be your husband will wait for you. And it ain't even got to be waiting per se, but align yourself with what the creator has said for you to be as a wife and as a woman, preserve yourself. Don't give your box away to any random man that just going on a date, whatever. And then you will find yourself in a position to have a husband and then you can procreate with him. Then y'all can have children. Then there's no guarantee that you won't end up in child support court, but the, the, the percentage is probably much real slim. So that's what I have for the women on the man's side. Listen, stop having sex with someone that you don't see yourself spending your life with, or that you want to have your children. I know, I know, but guess what? You have the power without the seed. There's nothing. And if she doesn't have the seed, there's no way that the, that it could be watered, that it can be planted or watered. You got to plant it. Then she has to water it. Then she has to carry it. And then it birth it. So again, men, you have the power. And I hate that you guys don't understand. I know y'all understand. I know you hear me, but y'all have the power. Y'all can set the situation straight. But again, don't share your most important thing, which is your seed with someone that you don't intend to live your life with or to have your child. Don't do it. Keep it all to yourself. Be stingy, be stingy. Uh, and you won't find yourself in child support court. But no guarantee. Because you could marry a woman, y'all could totally have differences in agreement and end up there also, but the likelihood is minimal. So again, I say the same thing to you, and I hope that y'all can hear what I'm saying. I really do. 
All right, so we're going to move on. On Tuesday, I've been busy this week. Y'all don't work every single day, seem like. Gosh, on Tuesday, I was over with Chad Charday. We were doing wife panel. If y'all have not seen that show, I need y'all to go back and check it out. It was myself, Chaz, Bella, and Lady Di. We had a good conversation. We were talking about how uh, good it is to be in love or to support our black husbands, our black men. And I need y'all to understand that's what we're here for. I know on the outside or the exterior, it doesn't look like all black women are down for that. And I really know. And guess what? Some of them probably are not. But those are the ones I would like for you to ignore. <laughs> Just ignore them. Because there are some out there who advocate for you, who want you to have the best life, who want to inspire you, who wants you to be the best version of yourself, who wants you to have a good wife and a good life. And over on that wife panel on Tuesday night, there were four of them, myself included. And we were just talking about how it feels to love a man, a black man and, and his struggles, you know, uh, the things he faces when he goes out there in the world to make a life for us. And if y'all have not seen that video, I need you to go over to Sade's channel, check it out. Mr. Boss has not at this point uh, made any cut it up or cut it up in any way. So y'all gonna have to take a look at it. It's not that long, but we had some good information. We had some good information. And then we talked about, uh, of course, we being submitted submission. We talked about loving them. We talked about protecting them and being a soft space. The one thing I want um, the ladies to take away from this is that we need more shows like this. Um, my thoughts, though, were, you know, I'm a, one of them deep thinkers that we have. You, you know, you touch on the surface, but it always takes my mind always takes me a little deeper. I would like to have more panels like this. But y'all already know that SB is calling for wife ed. And wife ed is coming soon, wife education. And in that, we're going to go deeper because we are real people. We have brains, women. That's what I'm talking about. We love. We have real concerns. And I don't think they should ever be overlooked. I, I don't think anybody should take us for granted because, you know, we may not get it the first time. I still would like to be that place of an example and that place where a person can come, a woman can come and say, just share her thoughts. We're not doing no complaining. We're growing. I can I can help with where is this coming from? How are you feeling? How do we get here? And all that will be done with wife education and wife <laughs> education is one of those things that's coming after 10,000 subscribers. It makes sense. It makes sense to me and Mr. Ball. So that's what we're doing. So y'all got to look forward to that. Outstanding show. Haven't seen it. Go over to um, Ch Chad Charday channel and check it out. We were good. It was four women that were all married. We had one year all the way up to 27 years. So they were all different, um, you know, times and marriages that were there, you know, you know, different experiences. We're going through a certain time and you had some newlyweds. You had some that were at that second phase in the marriage or what have you. And then we had me and one that had been married a long time. So I need y'all to check that out. And of course, we want to do more like that and of course, myself, I'm going a little deeper. I'm going to wife education because I want to build some wives. I want women to want to be married. And I want men to recognize that this woman is different. This woman's different right here. You know, she's for me. So that's coming soon. Now, on Wednesday night, I was up on the cruise season. Y'all know we love the cruise season. Shout out to the cruise Dearly season, beloved. Trill included. And everyone on the panel, we had an outstanding panel on Wednesday and we talked about the passport bros. Now it got interesting, it got really, really interest, interesting. So if y'all don't know anything about the passport bros, which um, I would say I don't know much about the passport bros. We were asked initially, you know, what, when we hear passport bros, what is our thoughts? Now for me, my initial thought of the passport bros was that it was a group of men that were totally frustrated with American women or women in the West. And they wanted to go over to explore different countries to find a wife. Now, if you ask me, do I still think that way? I would say, mm, somewhat. But I got a little new idea about it. Now I'm thinking it's a group of young men, or men, period, who are indeed frustrated <laughs> with women in the West, and they're going over to explore other countries before they decide to settle down. And I hate to say it, guys, but I don't find that wrong with that. <laughs> I don't. I don't find anything wrong with it. Um, some would say they could do that here. Yeah, they they can. But it's their preference to do it wherever they want to do it. Wherever, whatever. They got enough money to go to Thailand, to go to Brazil, wherever go. 
you know, I, I think about it myself. I'm wondering like, wow, if I was single at 25 and had lots of money, would I want to explore the world? I would say, no, I didn't, but <laughs> I'm not a man. I can see men wanting to be just like this. So I have absolutely no problem with them wanting to explore what the world has to offer and, you know, what the different women out there, the different cultures, you know, until they find themselves. And once they find themselves, if they end up in Thailand, Thailand with a woman that, you know, loves them and care about them and they want to, you know, plant their seed there. No problem. Marry the woman, plant your seed, have the baby. Probably be a beautiful little baby. I don't even know. But I have no problem with that. But what happened on the show is um, one of the little one of the face of the community of the Passport Bros, he actually came up and his name was Austin Holloman. Austin, he is the one now bringing all the content from other countries for uh, representing the Passport Bros. He uh, Austin is currently in Thailand and he did a video. He was on a date with a young girl. Now, now I got to tell you, this young girl was so looked so American to me, not so much in her features, facial features, but she had dark roots and pink hair, earring in her nose and everything. So I'm like, okay, all right. You know, don't know nothing about her, but her and Austin was on a date and um, I don't know, <laughs> but he actually came to the show and he, he spoke for himself. And after talking to him and listening to what he had to say, I again, I agreed that, if it's his preference to see the world and ha and see what it has to offer as a young man of 23, do it. Enjoy yourself. I don't think I would be putting up with a whole bunch of rah, rah, rah. And he made one comment while he was speaking to us. And he said this, and I have said this before because it was, um, y'all, y'all may not know, but I'm, I'm rich auntie also. And as rich auntie, I talked to young men. And one of my young men that I talk to often is Avery B. Avery B is a YouTuber. He has, oh, I don't know how many subscribers AB has right now, but he's doing his thing and always has. He and I do a video together. We were um, introduced. We had Corvettes. So, you know, young folks like cars. We had the Hellcat and the Corvette and AB and I did a um, collaboration and it was outstanding. But I got to know a little, a lot about young men and how they think. And y'all already know I'm reading books about the older ones. So either way, he said something to me and I learned that um, younger people, ladies more so than anything, they are really tomboyish. So to be called a bra is quite common. And I asked him, well, how do you feel about that? He's like, I don't like it. He said, I don't like it. You know, I don't, I, I prefer a woman a young lady be sweet and whatever, but he said, we call them twin because they're so mannish, beautiful girls. But for whatever reason, the culture that we're in, it has um, persuaded them or allowed them or made them think it was okay to call the young men bro and other things, ninja, bro, all that other stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I have mentioned this on my videos several times. I wish the ladies didn't do that because they don't really understand how the young men think. But I held the men accountable, too, because I said, what are you doing? Are you opening the doors? You know, are you, uh, let, you know, putting her in the car? You know, and I often ask this question, what comes first? Does she wear the dress or do you open the door? And that's always been a question of mine that I ask young men, what comes first? You know, how are you treating this young lady? Are you allowing, are you letting her know that bro is not acceptable? That's not what I want from you. Or does it even matter? And I think at their, this, where they are, it doesn't matter, you know, but I can say to the ladies, um, the young men do not want to be addressed as bro. And one of the things that Austin said is he said, I ain't got time to be dealing with these girls calling me bro. And, and, and all they want to do is pronouns and call you by pronouns. And I was like, Oh, I hear you. I hear you. So that was one of his complaints, too. And Austin is only 23 now. He says he's been living abroad for two years. That meant he was dating 18 and 19 year olds, maybe up to 20. So listen, passport bros, do your thing. If you can't find a woman here in the West that you're willing to spend time with, that you think is worth your time, I guess. Enjoy yourself. Go on over there. <laughs> you know, I happen to think if you procreate with anybody, it's going to be a nice black baby. <laughs> So I don't have a couple. I have no complaints. I don't. If women here in the West, we got to step it up. We got to know what the men are wanting. We need to listen to the men because we don't. 
we don't y'all will say y'all will say can y'all please just give me natural hair we'll say no we'll give you a natural wig you will say can you cut your nails down and i'll change the shape and i'll make them pointy you know you ask can uh, you know can you not go out tonight you say okay then i'll go out tomorrow night we're not listening we don't care what you say you you know we'll marry you you will marry us and you will make us your wives and you you know all you want is the respect of being my husband and my mom gets sick and i'll say mom's coming and you will say huh and i say yeah mom coming she'll be here tomorrow night i never asked you but i just told you mom was coming so we're, we're dropping the ball ladies we are so i understand these men i do we got to get back on it we got I'm, I'm not saying y'all are not fixable or you can't be fixed but for right now the things i'm seeing myself as a woman it's not acceptable as a wife so if we want to get to the wife life it's some things we need to do and right now the passport bros is like i ain't waiting on y'all i'm going over here so good luck but the one thing like i said to austin and i would say to you too a woman is a woman she may be very very submissive but she might have some game with her so y'all just be ready <laughs> just be ready and if she ain't got the game it might be her people i don't know just be careful and those were the words that I said to Austin. And I meant that. And I'm saying it to any man, because guess what? You're going to a whole different culture that you may not know nothing about. So the way you move is very important. So move accordingly. And that's all I had to say about the passport, bros. I'm not mad at him a bit because again, I argue with women to be ladies. They think they know better than me. I say, okay, I got you. I'm with you. I agree. And then you have to move on. So again, I get frustrated and I'm another woman just sharing my thoughts and it's frustrating. So listen, scam, like I said, 90% of passport bros is a fraud. Ooh, now scam. I don't know at first my, in my first thoughts, how a man going over to another country wanting to explore other women could be a fraud. What could be fraudulent about that? But Obviously, you know more than I do. I'm just basing it on what we talked about on Wednesday night and meeting a young man, Austin Holloman. He basically said he had a lot of content to get. So I felt like he was traveling the world, um, going to different other countries because of that. He wanted to be an influencer. So good luck, Austin. And uh, any of other others of you who suggest or who would like to go to other countries to find a woman, you know, because guess what? Since we've did that show on Wednesday, I have gotten a lot of success stories in my comment section about men who have done this successfully and have wives 10 years, 12 years, five years. It took a, a couple of them. They said it took maybe a year to find that woman, which is that's okay. And it shouldn't it be, it should take you about a year to get the culture down or to find exactly where you want to settle. And then you should find your woman. But either way, I had some success stories come into my comment section and be like, look, it worked for me. I'm enjoying myself. I'm happy. Um, Filipino women, I think was one of a couple of them. A few of them said that. And I don't know, but I did get some success stories. So I, I appreciate it. Now, here we go. Those are my feelings on the passport, bros. Now, getting back to this. Um, what proves that proves the point? What's the point? I sure do. You got some. Let me see. Scam. Did you say something else? That proves the point. What part did you prove that some we had some success stories? I'm not sure. Scam. But anyway, um, Big Ant, how are you? So Big Ant says, I say go to see the world as I did in the military. Exactly. Exactly. And I bet you have a lot of stories of meeting very beautiful women, some very kind. And that was or was not your idea of meeting your wife. But exactly. You know, I want, uh, I will, I ain't going to say it. But I think going for a young man to go into the military is absolutely. Um, Scam is going to explain what he's saying about passport bros being fraudulent. Uh, you're going to have to because, you know, they're just, you know, Scam, you know, you have a preference of a woman that is physically fit and goes to the gym and i can't ever see you i will never see you substituting that for anything and i think what they're telling us is they have a preference of an exotic woman from another country and that is what they want and i feel like that's their preference now 
I think you more strong head than they are. I think if they find a beautiful woman in the States that meets all those criteria, they may actually entertain her. But I can't see you entertaining the fat girl. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so you let me know. M Mills, how you doing? It's good to see you. So, okay, so this brings us to the story, this last story I heard today, or I might have had heard yesterday. And some of you have may have seen it on YouTube and maybe some other places, but it was Lala Anthony on the Breakfast Club, and she's talking about marriage. So we're gonna play this video, and this is gonna be her part. We're just gonna play a little snippet of it, and we're gonna talk about it because y'all know that's where I'm at, that's where I live. So here it goes. Priority mm -hmm. anymore. They have other things they would rather do than date or meeting people, you know, in, in the traditional way. So people are saying because of that, they have no interest in getting married. So anymore. you wouldn't get married again. I wouldn't get married again, but I was married. So at least I could say I did it and, you know, it didn't work out the way I had planned, but it's not something I would want to do again. But I did it. So I'm talking about people who are saying they have no interest in ever doing it or wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a goal of people and even people that are in relationships. A lot of them are not saying like the goal for our relationship is to get married. It's like. I hope y'all heard that. Did everyone hear that? I hope everyone heard that. Let, let me know. I think y'all did. Okay, so what Lala is saying, everybody, if y'all don't know who Lala Anthony is, she was married to a basketball player. His name was Car Carmelo um, Anthony. They were married for some time, but for whatever reason, she didn't discuss it, and I didn't think I needed to go back and figure it out because they are now divorced. But um, the question was, or what she's concerned about is, um, marriage is no longer a goal for anyone anymore is what she was saying. Whereas she was married and got divorced and she's other people around her are married, excuse me. And some seem to be very happy in their marriages. It is no longer a goal. Now over here, we recently have been saying that marriage is now an option. Whereas um, a year ago, people weren't even talking about marriage. It was like, ah, what's that? So now and for me, I'm thinking marriage is an option, but this young lady says, no, she's been married before and she would never do it again. Now, I don't know Miss um, Miss Anthony from nothing, but I would think that she's saying this because she didn't have a good marriage. I mean, it might have been good. She, well, she actually said, if you go back and look at the video, this video is on The Breakfast Club. She said that her marriage was good for the time. It was good when it was good. So when it got bad, it got bad. Now I have no idea. You know, she's married an athlete. We all know and hear of these different crazy stories about what athletes do. You know, we're not going to get into that. But one of the most important, one of the things I picked up on that she said was because of social media, marriage, you know, people now don't need to have that interaction that has come somewhat of a requirement for a foundation to be married. Because, you know, you know, again, I've been with Mr. Boss 27. You no, know, I've been with Mr. Boss longer than that. I've been with Mr. Boss 28 years, been married 27 years. Mr. Boss is my best friend. We had a relationship. We had at times when we talked and we communicated, we touched, you know, we were friends. We built up something before we got married. Now what's happening due to social media, DM and texting, um, all these things that are such a big influence and a distraction we don't have that anymore. So when we get into these relationships that require commitment, that requires um, trust, it was never, there's no foundation for it because you, you, we didn't do it. We never had it. So this weird things happen. I can get in a relationship with you and we could be in a relationship, maybe even live in the same house and shack up, but nothing ever becomes one. You know, I can live with you. We can do this. We can have sex. We can even have a kid, but we're never, we're never coming together. And if you decide to leave, I can leave. make sure you take your stuff and I'll take my stuff. But there was never a relationship. You never saw him as your friend. He never saw you as his friend. There was never, you never, <clears throat> excuse me. Y'all never adored each other. You never had that type of respect. See, sometimes like, if me and Mr. Boss would ever break up right here now to this day, I respect this man so much that I would never want to see anything bad happen to him. 
I would still love him. But now it's like, I'm gonna cut your head. People these days, they break up. They, they First of all, they if they get married, they come in with the thoughts of, I am going to be divorced. And just in case I get divorced, this is how it needs to be. So what is Edward saying? Hello, Edward, how you doing? Hello, security boss, I love you. <laughs> you <laughs> thank you for the stream watching in awe of you god bless you and the family happy new year preach 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 freestyle friday thank you so much <laughs> edward it's good to see you i hadn't seen you in a while but i'm glad that you're here so this is what i'm saying guys i have said this and me and mr boss have said this this social media thing is crazy it is a big influence and if I, if men and women y'all figure it out i would say mostly women if you indeed want to be married, I need you guys to pull away. Pull away from the social media. The influence is so terrible that it is shaping your mind. It's conditioning you to, conditioning you to think a certain way. And you're not being able to have those independent thoughts on your own, which require you to know exactly what a woman is or a wife is in marriage. So when we get these men that may love us, that may want to have a life with us forever, we don't know how to experience it. You know, we're experiencing it through what somebody else may have done on Instagram. You know, we don't have the true meaning of what we're actually doing. We're basing our life off of social media. So if I'm not at a certain place in five years, my husband's no good. If my husband doesn't pick up his shoes and shirt off the floor, my husband is no good. We never thought about and When Lady Di, I heard you say this. We never thought about what he did for us. We always just think about what he's not doing. And like I said the other day on wife panel, the bigger picture needs to be what we're looking at. Who cares whether he has left his shoes and shirt right here? Who cares? He man must have been tired. He must have been tired. I got it. I'm his wife. Because guess what he did? He went out there and made money and made sure that we had this covering, made sure that we had shelter. He made sure my car was clean. He made yeah, sure I had gas. It. In my car. So we have to train. I'm serious, ladies. Um, there's a there's a thought process that goes on with being that goes into being married and men, too. Again, I am not a teacher of men, but I do know what a good man looks like. I do know that if a man is willing to learn how to be a husband because you just don't come in. The, you know, I know people say you come in the door like that. No, you don't. You don't. You actually come in the door as two single minded individuals. Um, but you're willing. And you care for a person. See, that's the part we kind of like, ah, social media has got us so distant. There's no relationship building. There's no honoring this person. You don't know these people the way you should before you enter into marriage. It's almost like you're two strangers entering into a relationship that requires trust and respect and submission. And I've been hearing so many crazy things. I got to tell you guys, listen, I've said this several times. I have no problem with a prenup. If a man or woman enters a relationship and he decides he wants to marry that woman, he asks that woman to marry him, ask for a hand in marriage. And he is a man that is already made. He's got his home. He's got his career. He's got his monies in place, his investments in place or what have you. And he says to this woman, listen, I would like for you to sign a prenuptial agreement because I have all these things and I would love to be, you know, this way. This is this is this is it. But from this point on, you and I are married. We're becoming one. I have absolutely no problem with that because you don't always know a person's intentions. I have no problem with that. Same for the woman. If the woman won the lottery or if the woman has a career if whatever it is, if she's established coming in the door, she too needs to maybe protect her, her assets because y'all, there's some there's some people out there now that don't want you. They just only want what you got. And we got I got to be real about that. You know, in the day of me and Mr. Boss, we came in as average earning people. He had a plan. I say it all the time. The man had a plan of being an entrepreneur. He needed to sell that to me because I was okay being a worker. He sold me the plan of being an entrepreneur. And since then, I've been real estate, tow truck driver. Y'all know what I mean by that. Mr. Boss had a tow service. He taught me how to drive the truck. He and I did it together. We picked up cars. We worked together in everything that we've done. I've been an asset to this man. And along the way, there has been many times when the real estate business just catapulted us to another place. But guess what? The money came home and went in a pot because I knew I had a man that had a plan. And I always wanted to inspire him, always wanted to um, do whatever it was 
because I knew it was going to be for the betterment of me. So, Sir Chai, thank you so much for your $2 Super Chat. He says, happy Friday, Security Boss. We appreciate your work. Thank you so much. Listen, I appreciate you too. I hope you got my message the other day. Well, no, you probably didn't pay too much attention to it, but thank you. I want to mention something to you. I'm glad you interceded. Wait, I ain't going to say you interceded. Yeah, you did. You interceded for me because a young man had a problem with me telling another young man to be careful. Now, I have no idea why it's a bad idea to tell a younger man to be careful. I'm. This is me talking, y'all. Wisdom says this. Wisdom says you tell younger people that there's there could be uh, beware signs all around you and you're not seeing them. So when someone tells you to be careful, it just simply means to pay attention. It's no intentions with that. I had no intentions but to say, I need you to pay attention. I know sometimes young men and young women don't pay attention. And I don't, you know, the way you move is the way you move, but I need you to pay in attention. And Lord knows I wish somebody told me to be careful several times because I don't always want life to grow me up. Life will grow you up, but I don't always want it that way. That's tough, y'all. Life growing you up could be a night in prison, night in jail. You know, it could be throwing up because you drank too much. I don't want to throw up. Tell me two is enough. I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. So anyway, thank you so much, Sir Chai, for being there. Thank you. So anyway, I'm going back to my story, uh, which I've totally forgotten where I was, but it's okay because I, I always have stories. I live this way. <laughs> Sir Chai, you gave me another five dollar super chat. You said, "I know. Don't worry about these trolls, right?" Austin is a young but very stubborn, and he needs to listen to good advice. He could have been hurt in Brazil. He said that. He said he almost got shot two times. He said, I almost got shot two times. And the fact that I was an American is what actually um, got me out of the situation. And then he left. So again, I appreciate you so much for doing that. Um, Emil says, security boss, these young people do not respect elders and especially a woman. That's a lack of upbringing. Really? You know what, Emil? Thank you for that. Um, Because you know what I thought it was? I actually thought it was just men, young men becoming men. Um. Because men are stubborn. They want to be men. They want to um, live life the way they want to. And I am a woman. So you're right about that. I didn't. I wasn't going to blame it on the upbringing, though, because I have seen and witnessed some people, some 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 young men have very good parents. Very good. Have everything, you know, given to them, per se. And they still <laughs> need to bump their head and sometimes end up in prison. And there's no good reason for it. No good reason. I couldn't even tell you why. So I wasn't going to bring it on, blame it on the mamas and daddies, but Hey, I thank you. Um, but anyway, I was going back to the social media and the influence that the negative influence that Lala is saying here, because for me, goal goal should always be a merit, uh, a goal for, excuse me, marriage should always be a goal for a woman. At least, you know, I often, and y'all hear this, women dream about being married as young people. I did not have that dream, but a lot of women do dream about that. I think uh, Tr Trill made this comment. They have Pinterest boards and they talk about the color they wear and where they're going to get married, the venue and all these different things about being married. And I would hate that we would need to, because we're just living in a town, we're going to just take it away from them and say, no, nah, that's not your goal anymore. You just need to be out here by yourself, fending for yourself as an adult woman or whatever. I I don't believe that. I don't think that that was our purpose. <laughs> and I'm not saying every woman should be married, but I do think those that have that goal of being married should be able to um, still have that goal and still be able to align themselves uh, with the creator to become wives. Because I, again, I still feel like that we're not equipped to fight or to do those things that are required here in this world. I don't think we're made that way. I think we're made the weaker vessel for a reason. We're made to carry the kids for a reason. Why we gotta? Why we can't just be who we are? <laughs> uh, Ms. I just want to be a wife and my mother and have a family. See what I'm saying, Ms. Why we can't just be who we are? Why they gotta keep telling us we need to be equal? I don't want to be equal with a man. And there's a lot of women out here, young ladies, that don't want to be equal. I don't want to be equal. And I don't want my daughter to be equal. I don't want, I want a man to have, to walk in the authority that he was given from the beginning. When God created Adam, he gave, he gave him the authority over everything. He said, you name everything, whatever you want to call it, you do that. 
Yes, the work wasn't finished. Now let me give you a woman. He gave for the purpose of the man. I want to help. You need to help me. Help me. I need you to. She's going to help you. What you need to do. Y'all do it together. But now. Uh-uh. We need to do something different. No, I don't. No, we don't. I don't care what the Be social liar. media world or, or this Be world liar. is telling us. Now we now some of us don't even we can't even identify as a woman anymore. A woman's definition is changing. It's all about how you feel now. You're you have if you feel like a woman inside, I'm supposed to call you one. They feel liar, like a woman? Bro, they liars. Ricky, they lying. Tell them, Ricky, they liars. So I hope y'all see what's going on. But it's not real. So let's get out of it when we if we want something. Get a relationship with your creator. Find out who you're supposed to be. You know, find out what your purpose is for being here. Stick to that. Find a man, find a husband, not find them, but you know, align yourself with your creator and one will come. I actually believe that. Because marriage is an option. Marriage is an option. A woman and a man should be together. Social media is killing us. Social media is a big problem in marriage for so many different reasons y'all remember way back facebook you you would meet those people that you went to school with then speak they would hook up have sex or whatever and marriage is ruined why 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 would you give away a whole life of building with someone that you cared about for a fling that was back in high school who does that and why but it happened it happened a lot then came TikTok, instagram youtube all these other ones came about well yeah yeah and we're still falling for the okie doke. So we got to get back in. We got the men. I'm saying to y'all, walk it out. You have the authority to do this. Ladies, be who you're supposed to be. JG says wisdom has become foolish and foolishness has become righteous. What? Foolish has become righteous. Oh, JG. Whew. That's a terrible thought. But you're right. What is right is wrong and what's wrong is right. So you said it. It's true. It's true. But we got to get back. You know, everybody's not going to get it. Y'all already know. Trina B, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and welcome to SB Nation. Everybody's not going to get it, y'all. There's going to be some people that are left behind. But really, honestly, this don't allow this to um, sway who you are. Again, I said that there has now uh, La La also mentioned that marriage is different now and i told you guys about a week or so ago that now we're we're experiencing this this different type of marriage and i even heard someone say that uh marriage is a social construct and i again i get what you're saying but that's because you're changing it, its initial purpose for it we're going back to adam and eve uh we're going back to the marriage that is in the bible y'all yeah, that's the marriage i have because i have no idea how a business agreement can always stay together and be fair. Huh? What? So again, I am part of the covenant. There's a covenant marriage and a contractual marriage. That's what I'm understanding. You have to make a decision on what it is that you want. I realize me saying that I agree with um, the prenup would make it a contractual marriage. Um, the only reason why I would say that is because of the times that we are living in. And I hate that. Because I am, you're selling yourself short when you can't um, believe in the person that you're choosing to marry you. You are selling yourself so short. But I know, y'all, I understand um, there are a lot of, lot of women that don't have good intentions. There are a lot of men that don't have good intentions. So we got to protect ourselves from, from, you know, we got to protect our stuff. That's crazy. The stuff that you can't take with you. I understand. Do I agree with it? Do I agree totally about that? No, but I do definitely understand we're in this time. We're in 2023 and stuff is important. It's very important. The bag is important. I myself would prefer to build with my man, grow with him, have money with him. And then when we die, who knows who gets it? Who knows? We gone. Who really cares? I'm gone. I've moved on. But I do know that that is important because that is, that's, that's where we are now. So, that is what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, it's it's been it's been crazy for me to try to, but I'm gonna continue to do it. I'm gonna fight for marriage because I would I would love for everyone if you decide to get married to have the marriage that is based on a covenant covenant that is based on principles. 
um, because I can't imagine that me being a woman and Mr. Boss being a man, that we could actually do this alone. We would have to put our faith in something that's much bigger than us because we mess up. He and I mess up. We do crazy stuff. I mean, you know, might go out, spend some money, might go out and buy a car. We didn't need that car. We didn't need that dress, but we did it anyway. Things of that nature. We we mess up, but we know that there's a bigger picture to what we're doing than just us. He may leave his, he might put mud on the floor. He know his wife is one of those people who just loves a clean house, but he put mud on the floor. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I have to know that my husband put mud on the floor today, but shoot, he cleaned the gutters yesterday. We have to, we have to grow and mature and understand that it's a bigger picture than house chores. My husband has a bigger job than just helping me around the house. He needs to be able to protect me. He needs to be able to see things that I can't see. He needs to be able to be one with me and have that feeling of, wow, wow, wow. Listen, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. I'm getting something different over. He needs to see things that I can't see and vice versa, you know, and that's the kind of relationship you want. So the social media era is definitely taking that away because there's no one building. There's no building going on, y'all. There's no building. Nobody's building with each other. You're not even, um, you know, the date is calculated. The boxes have to be checked. I don't even really know if I like you or not because you didn't have this, you know, that kind of craziness. It's, it's getting to be weird. So I'm asking and I'm just advising again. Let me say this. Wife education is coming. So all you men that are ready and looking for a woman, y'all get ready because it's going to be some of them out there. We've already experienced the last a quarter of last year, about five, mar well, no, no, let me say it right. Let me see how I'm going to say it. At least one marriage and at least four other engagements over here at SB Nation <laughs> at the last quarter of last year. So there are some folks out there believing in marriage and I appreciate it so much because we need that. We need each other. You need a place that you can be vulnerable and a place where you can trust someone and that you can grow with. I mean, that is, that's the foundation for an a good marriage scam hey what's going on nothing much how you doing all is well tell me what you're talking about you talking about the passport bro thing oh yeah sure or whatever or whatever you wanted to say sure um just like uh the manosphere scamosphere um soon to be absorbed by the dust of sphere what's going on scam Anybody on YouTube can grab a microphone and become, say wh whatever they want. Right. Therefore, um, people like hearing what they want to hear. They don't want the truth. They don't want change. They don't. They just want to hear something and to feel something. More people are interested in feeling something than actually actual reality. That's why they're so delusional. Okay. Or why they'll come to get a feeling, a fix. It could be just to beat up and yell at women. And then they go back to the same miserable life that they already had or to beat up on the men. Then they go back and, you know, same thing applies to the passport bro thing. Maybe 10 percent. And that's being being unrealistic. Maybe 10 percent of the men actually are actual passport bros. I mean, I have a passport going and looking for a spouse in another country. Options open. Qualify for these women. And I'm going to give them give these women the best life that I can, just like they're going to give me the best life that they can. Very so, small population of people even have a passport. <clears throat> Every time I get on a panel and they talk about passport, bros, most of the dudes don't even have a passport. If you ain't got a passport, what are you talking about? They're telling, they're trying to tell me about the countries. Dude, where you been? They ain't left their own state. Telling me about what's going on in another country. Really, bro? But man, them women over here, you been there? Tell me about them. Well, you, you know. Okay, when was the last time you've been to this place? Well, I never left Chicago. I never left Memphis. But I'm telling you, these women. Really, bro? So are you saying this is just an idea or is it? Um, what, 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 okay, let me ask it differently. What do you think the purpose of what them saying this and not actually walking it out? How does that help anybody? Who said the manosphere in a lot of these spaces are about helping anybody? Well, I was always told the manosphere was to make men the best versions of themselves. It's actually there to uh, promote and advocate for men. It's actually there to, um, you know, share with you guys things that you may not know about a woman and, and, you know, to better yourself, to make, you know, let 
I'm not in the manosphere, of course, and I don't hear and I don't follow anybody that is there. But those are the things I've heard. It's always a build, some, you know, a building block for men, you know, a place that men can go where they may not have had, you know, examples or fathers or what have you. Manosphere is where you can go to become more, you know, alert about being who you are. Know what's going on. Um, Manosphere, just like Passport Bros. Anybody can get a channel. You got some of the people, content, 50,000, 200,000 subscribers yelling at the women. These modern women ain't nothing. Mm. And they click the red X and they got a wife cooking them dinner. Mm. They got 5,000 dollars in super chats. And they got a wife cooking them dinner. Or they yell, uh, what's another one? Um, I didn't know that. I thought, let me tell you, let me tell you. Okay, look. You, oh, you, you, scam. I appreciate you because you've been with me from the beginning, so you know who I am by now. Yeah. Um, I really think that there are a lot of uh, young men that do want to have wives and are, and even yourself. You've been in the military, so you've been all the way around the world. You know what's there. You choose to find your wife wherever you do, and you know you have your preference. And mm -hmm. in my comment section, I've been getting a lot of that. A lot of the men have success stories. I understand what you're saying. Um. And I don't know why that would even be beneficial to lie about what you're doing because it doesn't help your cause. But there is a lot of men that are out there that are going to other countries and finding good women and they're marrying them. And I actually, not to take anything from you, I could actually see you doing that. So, but I also dance salsa, I speak Spanish, and I've also yeah, had, yeah, I've that's also right. had girlfriends in the United States prior to even speaking Spanish. Right. That I've dated. So it's different if I were to go over there. Yeah. Uh, so are you saying person, men, oh, are ahead. you just saying the men that you've been seeing on different platforms are just not qualified to do what they're saying they want to do? No, what I'm saying is there is a small section of actual passport bro. Like right. I know some people, I know one coworker, a friend of a friend who've met spouses overseas right. or have come over. You know, I've dated a couple first generation before in the States. Right. So I know mm -hmm. people who have, mm -hmm. and those people have wives. They dated and they they have an actual marriage. Right. Most of the people, ninety percent, a lot of them either don't have a passport and they're talking about something that they don't know about, or they're going somewhere, and um, <clears throat> they're selling, they're buying a fake dream. If you don't speak any the other language and know about the culture, all you can do is hang in a tourist area, and the same dream that that they're selling the Americans. You go over there and all the women are submissive because you're American. That's a lie. Well, see, I never it's believe funny. that because I, I know women are women. That is true. And so I'll I think that part wasn't exactly true. I've been on the plane sitting next to somebody who got some fake girlfriend. He's bought a new iPhone for two weeks. Uh, I'm there eight days. Seven days later, I see her with a different dude. I've seen this stuff. And I can ask her in Spanish what's really going on. I can talk to the hotel workers or the person up here from business owners, from American scam artists to Dominican scam artists to the fake prostitutes, real ones. I see it all from there. Nine, 10 days. I speak to Spanish. They tell me everything. I can show you messages of people sending money for Valentine's Day. Five hundred thousand dollars in U.S. Yeah, I've seen it all. And that's just me. I don't even live there. I'm just, I'm just talking about just visiting places, just having conversations in tourist so, areas, out tourist areas, friends who are Dominican. That's just DR. Colombia, that's not another country. Yeah. Um, El Salvador, Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, I'm probably going to go. I think about going to either Panama or to another city in, in Colombia, uh, maybe March, April. But I'm just traveling. And I like the salsa. I want to go. Right, right, somewhere right. Really, since I can't go to Cuba, that's where I really want to go. <laughs> uh, I want to go somewhere where they saw some. something different. You it's know what? Like, um, I hate these women, so I'm going to go over there. The reason you hate these women. Yes, they are skinnier. I will say that. Yes, they are. Um, you do get a better opportunity, a better shot from being American. But if you don't speak the language, you don't know what you're going to be. You end up robbed. Well, that, that, that don't happen as much as they say it does. But you know it, what, though? Um, I'm glad you said that because I never did Ronan. I have not talked to Ronan because Ronan mentioned that um, on the panel the other night 
that um, it is it can get a little bit dangerous. And I wanted to ask him about that. Now, are you saying that? I can speak to that, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, that's what I want you to speak to it because I was wanting to know from him what is he actually talking about. So go ahead and tell me about it. Um, I only know of one person. He befriended him and a friend went somewhere. They knew some girls, and then one dumb dude decided. Uh, some Haitian guy who speaks English because y'all don't speak no English. I mean, don't speak no Spanish. So they got a fake tour guide and he told the dude, hey man, I don't trust this dude. He's like, no, it's all good. They slip something in a drink. They wake up, a lot of their stuff and a good watch and cell, not cell phone, stuff stolen out the room. That can happen. It could have been worse. Yeah. But there are some funny stuff that does happen. Yeah. For the most part, is usually a, a usually if you're in a tourist area, it could be safe. Because no country wants to be the country where Americans end up floating in the river. That messes with tourism. Right. Right. They're going to go after that that Dominican or that Haitian or whoever. I'm just use DR for example. You don't want to be the Dominican that messed up their tour the tourist money. Right. And but you know that there's a lot of uh, missing couples and and couples that are passing away are being deleted in the DR. You know that, don't you? Well, here's the deal. Because I remember it was 2019 where they had a small ring. I think it was a whole total of six people. Whopping total. Because according to them, everybody was dying. No, not everybody. But that's a lot of people. When saying, that's how, about... they, that's oh. how they narrated. But okay. 2019, which I went over there. I remember sitting in a business in a, a work meeting. Supervisors meeting. I was a supervisor at the time. You're going to DR next month? Man, are you worried about dying? As this meeting was going on, it was police sirens outside. I was like, you hear them police sirens? Looks like somebody's dying in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta at the time. Looks oh, like God, somebody's dying in Atlanta. Them. Oh, that, that's different. <laughs> 20 people died in Atlanta yesterday. He's like, oh, well, you got a point. That's yeah, just a fear but- thing. And people make one story about one thing that happened and they blow it all up like it's reality. Yeah. But there was fake alcohol. I think it's transmission fluid or something that tastes like alcohol or something from China. I don't know nothing about that. Some kind, I don't drink, but some yeah. kind, what is it? Is it transmission fluid? Antifreeze. You You're talking about antifreeze. antifreeze? It looks a different color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was some bogus alcohol being bought from China or somewhere and a couple resorts had it and some people died. That's what happened. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Oh, Wow. And they blew it up to act like soon as you get off the plane, all the Americans are laid in the ditch dead somewhere. No, I didn't, I didn't think it was like that. Okay. But I went and I'm still alive. Good, good. But no, that's just my thing with the passport bros. They're selling a fake dream. They're overblowing something. Like some of these dust and crust dudes can just show up and they're going to come back with, with, with four supermodels lined up in their living room cleaning their house. No. Wow. And the dude's talking. Anything to be mad at the women. Ha ha, we get our passport. No, you're not. You got a felony. You ain't get no passport. Uh-oh. Scam, you, you didn't say that. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to the liquor store and back. Wow. So, Dusto, listen, I want to tell you two things. I love your show that you had for me. I love your show, actually, period. Uh, I, I'm so, innocent. Those people. Oh, okay, so they wouldn't you. Okay, but I want you to shout out your show. But before I let you go, I want you to um, let everybody not. Edit, it, well, did you have anything else you wanted to add about anything? I mean, I, I appreciate what you said about the passport, bros. I have no. Um, again, I had several success stories in my um, comment section and the people were very, you know, explicit with what they were saying. They went over. They talked about how they did it. They live there now and all of that. And they seem to have enjoyed, you know their decision. They enjoying what they're doing and they have no complaints, but I could see how it won't work for everybody. I understand that. But again, um, it's their preference for now. And until they find their way, what can we do? That's, that's fair. And there are men who are going and doing this and succeeding. Yes. But just like in anything, there's very few people who are succeeding in something and there's more people talking. Right. I hear that. Point, last point. Um, there is a whole bunch of uh, women, just about as many, maybe even more, that are passport females. They don't talk about that. That's any country. Yeah, no, we see that. We see that all the time. But, you know, they usually travel in groups. 
And guess what they're doing? What? In groups. What? What? <laughs> what you get ready to say? What they doing? Nothing. What, what they doing? doing? What you think they're doing? I don't know. I don't read between the lines. Just tell me. Same thing they're doing when they go to New Orleans, Vegas, Miami. It's the same thing. It's doing another country. Mm, okay. But do, oh, listen, let me ask you a question. I want to ask you what you think about this. I wonder, young lady said a lot of the men in these other countries are getting it. Um, they're um, upset because a lot of the American men are coming over and taking their women. What do you think about that? Um, not realistic. Okay. There's some stuff I'll speak on the public, some stuff I won't. Mm. But, All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let me let me go to the next caller. Go ahead and shout, shout out your channel, though. Shout out your channel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we tried to get the people in order and they said no. Therefore, we've created the dust of sphere on the Black Man Unfiltered Network. I'm not responsible for these characters and these trolls. I'm an innocent man. But this is 30 minutes dedicated to 100% organic trolling. We had an imitation security boss. I don't know where she came from. Uh, I, I was on vacation when this happened. But we had an imitation security boss, imitation world class. And I don't know. Hey, I don't know. We had a wig ninja. But on a black man unfiltered, if you have nothing better to do and you're sick of the negativity and the back and forth, the dusting and crusting, the men yelling at the women, the women yelling at the men, tune into the dust of sphere on the black man unfiltered network. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scam. We are definitely one, tuned in. One pot. Just one, one pot. That's it. See, if we can get one pot and everybody together, we wouldn't have these problems. You agree with me, don't you? <laughs> and I will gladly order a one pot t shirt. If you guys like okay. Uh, I gotta uh, put, we gotta put, pretty, Mr. Ball's gotta put that together. Thank you, though. Black couple actually putting their money in one pot. I, I, I would actually order that, that t shirt. I got you. I got It's coming soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dusto. We'll see you soon. All right. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Y'all heard that one part. If we had one part, we would have all love in the world. We wouldn't even need to be having these discussions. <laughs> all right, y'all. Next to the uh, next caller is Dr. Steele. Dr. Steele, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine. And you? Doing well. What you got to add to this? I know you've been there. Thank you so much for your support. You were on cruise seats. Oh, you were also on the wife panel. Did you see the wife panel on Monday? I think so. Yeah. Good, yeah, good. Okay. I was there. I, yeah, I think you were. Uh -huh. Good. So what's going on? Well, you mentioned something about how couples you know, can build. Yes. And when you said that statement, it made me think about my parents because, you know, they've been together for so many years. But when they first got together, they nearly had they nearly had nothing. Right. They actually did. So all those years, they'll be, you know, they, they, they build each other up. I know my dad was ahead of the household, but he listens to my mom. Um, you know, I remember mom telling me this story so many times. And now today, you know, they have a nice house and two vehicles. That's because, and, and again, it's the same people with each other building each other up for basically nothing, you know, and, you know, this, this is living proof where, you know, a couple, no matter where, no matter how you start, when you first met, you can, when you build with each other, when you concentrate on each other, anything, anything great can happen. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And me, you know, growing up, you know, with my situation with relationships, I mean, I've seen all this happen, but I didn't really understand it until I got in these YouTube streets. Mm. I really didn't. I've been in four relationships and they were bad, but mainly because I really didn't understand what my role really was. And then when I got in these YouTube streets, now I began to see, you know, where did I go wrong somewhere? So now with this newfound knowledge, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm looking everywhere. I've been on three shows on YouTube. Three, most recently the pineapple show three nights ago. 
I'm going to look at it. You've been over there with Millie. <laughs> I'm going to go yeah, check gonna... it out. So tell me something. Have you got any callers? Well, let's see. While it's a Melody King show, I did have one, one caller. I did have one person I communicated with. And on Kendra G's show, I did have 11 hits, but they just all fickled off for some reason. I don't know. And now on Melly Monica's show, I get to communicate with somebody, you know, finally. But haven't heard from her, well, only except for once on, on the DM. So, you know. Well, you said it's only been two days, though. It's only been two days ago, right? It's only, yeah, it's been only two days. So, yeah, I'm still looking because I know, I mean, I believe there are good Black women here. And three nights ago, I've seen the proof. I've seen her on Kendra's show. <laughs> you know, good black women. Um, haven't seen seen a Melody King, but I am. I I did communicate with one of them. So yeah, they still they still exist. Yep. Which leads me to the subject of passport bros. Now, again, I'm not a passport bro, but you know, let's say if I go to another part of the world. For, you know, for some other reason other than looking for love and, you know, maybe love found me or what have you, have you, I still be a happy guy no matter what. But the thing is, these are still women. There are good women. There are bad women. There are women who would be submissive and there are some that are, that are emasculate you. Yes. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the proportions are in each company country but yes every country has it okay so you know wherever part of the world you know you go to you still got to impress these ladies you still have to you know, have a plan mm. no matter where you go that's true and let me tell you something um here we can definitely um help because I think sometimes the black woman has um, disappointed the black man a bit because we don't ensure or add that value back to you or let you all know how valuable you are. And sometimes that could be because, um, you know, there are no fathers in the home or whatever. There's no relationship anymore. There's no, you know, maybe the mothers are not telling the young men what they can do, you know, how, how much they can achieve. You know, it's, it, we're, the chili the, is gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm saying to you, we need to go back and say, look, no, I'm going to be a cheerleader. You need to, you can do this. You're very valuable to us, our, to our community. You're very valuable. You have the authority to do it. All you got to do is believe, believe in it. That gives a man the confidence he can to, like you say, approach these women mm -hmm. to, to determine, you know, what he does and what he don't want. Because, you know, you're going to, like you said, you're going to have women who are going to be submissive. You're going to have women who are going to be masculine. If a woman is not the woman you want, you will definitely greet her and say hello, but you just keep on walking. Whereas if you don't have that confidence to do so, you might just accept whatever comes your way just mm -hmm. because you're lonely, you're tired of waiting. You know what I'm saying? And, and then that's just a horrible way to live. Mm -hmm. So we got to continue to let our men know that we value you all. And I don't think we do that. I know we don't. I know we don't do it, but we got to continue to do so. And I, of course, value my husband, but I have to tell you all the same, just like you, you, you support me all, everywhere I go. Um, that's valuable to me and you are a valuable person and you need to know who you are as a man. Cause you said initially I wasn't sure of my role. Now there are some things that um, come from YouTube that could be good, but you have to be careful. You yeah. too have to be careful <laughs> yeah. because it, it could, it could change your mindset about women very easily. And it could give you a thought of hating, hating um, women. And we don't want that either. Cause there are a lot of good women in the world. Also black women. There are a lot yeah. of good women. Yeah, what they always say about social media, you know, when you listen to somebody on social media, you also got to use your common sense. <laughs> when you, listen. you know, you know, you have to really pay attention to see if it, if, if that if that person resonates with you, if, if that person doesn't resonate with you. And believe me, I have seen some content creators I did not resonate with. OK, yeah. OK. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know, because you know what, if you if you are a young person. Um, and, and you're not in a good place mentally. I don't know you, if that person is able to relate to you, that may, that may be all it takes, but that may not be the right thing. 
Right. So that that's that's one thing you have to slow down and make sure that, you know, is this the right thing? Because you and I both know there are some women out there that push hate and they have thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. that's thousands. Mean. So that means a lot of women are being influenced by a hate message. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't listen to them or I don't listen to any men that do the opposite. But I'm understanding that there are a lot of men who push a hate message towards women. So that's the same thing. You got a lot of men that totally disrespect women. Now I have been on the disrespect side of it and, and I'm sitting looking like, where is this coming from? You know, mm -hmm. you know, so we definitely have to watch out for who we listening to. And I, I've gotten smart about it. I'll like, uh, goodbye, <laughs> you know, real quick. I'm out of here. So definitely pay attention. So did you have anything else you want to add? I'm gonna bring up the next caller. Yeah. I want to say this right quick. Sure. Um, I am glad that you're, uh, making the, uh, the 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 wife school, yep, yeah, the wife school because I mean, and I really appreciate it as a man because when you reach out, you know, to many women, that's more women that you know we you know you know, can choose from. So I, I really thank you, and I think you're the perfect person for this too. Thank you. I really, I really do think so. Thank you very much. Um, I hope so. But again, if you know of some woman or if you come across some woman, we need women to be there. You know how it is with the women. With women we're a little slow to move. I guess we're a little cautious, I guess. But we definitely want to get to the 10,000 subscriber. And then once we get beyond that, we'll feel like, you know, SB will be out there a lot more. And then we can benefit from these classes because I want to become better also. And the only way I do that is when women challenge me or when people challenge me. When I'm challenged with something, it makes me think. So um, that's that's the goal. And we're going to like I said, we're making better women. We're making wives. So we're creating that situation for and it's better for everybody. You know, yeah. and they get to decide if they want to be mamas. <laughs> 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 they can decide that on their own. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh huh. Bye bye. All right. That was good. That was good. Y'all listen. Wife Ed is coming. Wife education is coming. We're going to get that 10,000 subscriber count and then we're going to open it up. So who is the next caller? Is it my co-host? Co-host, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are we, are we riding um, Silverado type right now? You know what I'm talking about? I'm headed in. I'm headed in from work. I'm headed in from work. This traffic so deep. I I'm about to go to sleep. Listen, but, this is ridiculous. But guess what, though? Let me say this, though. This is what I always say. Black man, I don't even care if traffic is deep. When I'm in my car, I enjoy my ride. So I'm enjoying you know my, you, you enjoying yourself right now. It don't even really matter. You could look, you could be going at a turtle's pace. You're gonna get there, but you still enjoying your ride. How about that? Absolutely, absolutely. SB, listen, yes, I already sir. put it in the comments, but you're gonna get you know, you're gonna get YouTube blouses of the year if you keep oh. the swag up now. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I mean, this wardrobe is, is banging. The other day you had on one killing. The, what, what's going on, Mr. Boss? This is love. This what's is the, love. This is love. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. You see, love. <laughs> I have to yeah, put my love yeah. gear. Well, this is my fighting gear. When I come out, I'll never know what I'm going to get, right? So I yeah, you're put, right. have to put on the love gear. What's going on with you? Man, you know, I was just calling in. You know, I got to support SB because I've been missing the last few Fridays because work didn't have me. I said, man, I done got out early, a little earlier today to be calling and support my SB. So I'm, I'm here. Black man, black man, guess I'm, what? I'm, I'm I am like, listen. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Oh, shoot. Can you? Wanna, yeah, well, you going in and out. It's look like you. Did you go underneath a bridge? It sounds like. <laughs> oh, shoot, black man, you can't hear me. It went out. You frozen. Ah! So listen, we can get him back up. Black man, I hear you. You got it? Can you hear me? Can you hear I me now? Can. I got to tell you this. Yeah, I can hear you. Listen, I'm 665 subscribers. No, I'm not. That was at the beginning of the show. So I'm about 660 subscribers away from 10,000. 10,000, black man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> You'll be there in no time. You'll We've be been working no hard. Mr. Boss has been putting in the work. So listen, when we get there, we're going to have a little party and then we're going to get to some new business. But I can't wait. And it's listen, you have been such a big contributor to that being with me on Monday night. And I love it. So continue to do and what you know you what? Do. what? You know what? You know what I found, you know what I found out? What? You know, when you work, when, when it's honest, you got to work twice as hard. 
Because security boss, if you was out here half naked on your panel talking about trash every day, you have 50,000 subscribers. Yep, you're right. If I had a twerk so, video, I'll be all in, wouldn't I? Oh, man, everybody. Have you seen security boss twerk video? Oh! Yeah. oh. You got to see. You got to see. I know. Yeah, if I was talking you know foolishness. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And I can hear it now. I can hear, you know, Mr. Boss going to have a remix. He's going to be doing the Dilla Beloved Twerk Fest. You <laughs> know, and then Security Boss, that's that. You know, everybody going to be clicking in. You have 50,000 subscribers overnight. Absolutely. That's how it goes. But, you know, I ain't down for that. I'm trying to get people married. I, I want to live long and good. I don't want, I, I don't, I would love for everybody else to be able to share into that. I don't like that crazy life. No, no right. way. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad out here, security boss. Uh, hopefully tonight, security boss. Are you on a show? Are you doing a show tonight? No, no. Tonight's Anywhere? Friday. No, I'm done after today. After right, you know, after we done for this five o'clock show, I'm done. But you yeah, gonna, well, I mean, uh, you gonna be at the barbershop tonight, right? Yeah, the barbershop tonight at eight o'clock Central Standard Time, and uh, we're talking about men are the problem. Prove me wrong. Um, Whoa. And so, and um, so, yeah, so we're going to have a, I mean, we're going to have a great panel tonight. We're going to have Trigger Mike. We're going to have Hink. Uh, man, we're going to have, uh, um, I got a whole bunch of uh, it, the men that pr have never been to the panel before, but that, that have significant other shows. They're going to be on the show tonight. We're going to discuss it tonight. We will have a great conversation tonight. Well, go ahead and shout out the show again and, and let everybody so, know, because, um, you know, I'm always in the background. It's the barbershop. I can't be all in front and center, but let everybody know what's going on. Absolutely, guys. Tonight, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, uh, the barbershop will be wide open. We're going to have a whole bunch of guys there that you new faces in, 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 in this in this place of the barbershop. Uh, and we're going to be talking about men are the problem. Prove me wrong. Uh, a lot of men feel as if men are the problem. So I'm going to have some of those men on the show that feel like men are responsible for everything that's going on in the community. And so and we're going to have them come. Wait a minute. Now, look, you said a word that I don't quite agree with. You said every. We Ain't nobody said every, right? No, not every. Well, well yes, ma'am. I got some, well, I got a few guys that's going to be on the panel tonight that, that believes that everything that has bad has happened with, when it comes to single motherhood, when it comes to the community dying, when it comes to all of that. Uh, they feel as if the man created this. And and uh, for, for the women to be in a bad situation, we put them in that situation. They're single moms. We put them in that situation. The community is upside down because we made it that way. So we so we're going to have a discussion tonight. We'll be able, it's going to be it's going to be a discussion. OK, well, let me say this. We ain't going to talk in absolute. So that wouldn't be every because there's a whole lot of situations that are plaguing our community. But I can see someone saying um, due to lack of good leadership, a lot of things have fallen apart. But listen. Right. It sounds like you have an opportunity, black man, to really get mm -hmm. some solutions and make some difference, you know, change some people's mind or grow some people up tonight. So take right. that opportunity to do that. You know, right. don't get caught up in the scenarios because, you know, we got a whole bunch of different scenarios right. that can, get, you know, there's a whole bunch right. of single moms. There's a whole bunch of deadbeat dads. You know how they talk. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't right. get caught. Try not to get caught up in that and just stick to the point because, um, we do need to know that need men to know that you're valuable. We need to add value back to men. No man needs to walk around with his head down, not knowing who he is. So that we right. know is true. But you know, ain't a man ain't responsible for no woman twerking. Right. <laughs> twerking right. Up. Right. Huh? I meant to ask you, and Mr. Boss, I did you get the video? I sent you the video of the the forty eight year old lady uh, and her son. Did you get it? Tell me. Can you tell me a little bit more? Uh, when she found out that the dude she has the babies with was her son she gave her for adoption when she was 15? No, I didn't see that. I haven't seen that. I, see, I sent it to you and Mr. Boss. I, I, I DM'd it to you. That's why I was like, man, I wanted to secure my watch it already. So no, I, I sent you the I'm going to take a look at it, though, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen yeah. that. You know, I'll be on your videos. I ain't seen that one. I didn't see it. I haven't yeah. seen it yet, but I've been having a day today. So okay. today was my day. I really chilled all day, got massages, did a whole lot of stuff that I just been dreaming about all month. So, you know, well, I you haven't said, been have, on the phone. When was, when was the last time you sat out and, and just listened to the trees? Because, you know, we had that conversation. You know, I do that, don't you? Yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't, yes. I haven't done it in a while and it's time. It's time. But you know what? We've been busy, black man. It's time now too. Mr. Boss got a whole schedule ready for me. 
so you all can be inter thoroughly entertained when we get to 10,000. He's changing. We're changing some things. Some things are changing. So he's getting it all ready. I'm going with the flow. Guess what Mr. Boss said to me? I about fell out. He said, you know what I need for you to do? I said, what? He said, I need you to cooperate with me. I said, what? Oh, <laughs> my God. I oh, know. But you can't Come believe on. that. Come on, Mr. Boss. Come on, dear beloved. What? He said, I need you to cooperate with me. I said, no, you didn't just put your foot down. Yeah, put it down and leave it down, Mr. Boss. He did. I was like, cooperate? Oh, no, you didn't. I <laughs> then I laughed, of course. Hey, oh, security like, boss. He, he, and also, um, y'all are killing on TikTok now. Listen, yeah, listen, know, listen. But you, no, but you know what? Mr. Boss said he ain't been seeing our videos lately. I don't know. He haven't been seeing y'all's? That's what he said. I don't know. I've been, I haven't been really, you know, that's what he said. He said he hadn't been seeing them like, you know, back when we first mentioned it, it was, it was way a lot, a lot, but he says lately he hadn't been seeing any, but I don't know, you know, maybe cause it's not as us. So why would we, you know, <laughs> why would we, right, right, it? Right. But right. I don't know, but definitely, I mean, I have a lot of new subscribers from TikTok, so it makes sense. So I definitely appreciate them for what, you know, contributing, engaging, comment because they be up on it with the comments they really do absolutely um, absolutely they do. i definitely appreciate that but listen i gotta see that video and it was something else i was gonna tell you y'all listen that is gonna be an outstanding show tonight but again um let's just i'm gonna tune in you know i'm gonna be in the background i'm not gonna you know oh yeah, 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 but, yeah. but we gotta um definitely have that conversation because um i don't think men understand how how powerful and valuable that you all are all men. Right. Now, I'm not talking about you because you walked yours out. You got your kids. You walked it out. You did all the things that you were, were groomed to do. But there are a right. lot of men, uh, black men, that don't know that. A lot of black men don't know that they have, uh, from the beginning, been given the authority, you know, mm -hmm. to do what you need to do as a man and, and, and don't need to have a woman tell you anything. All we're supposed to do is be help me and to inspire you all and say you can do. We're supposed to be the cheerleaders in the background. You got it, babe. You got it. You got it. And, and there ain't a lot of women cheering. No, no, no. <laughs> but, and we know what's secure about. I'm waiting on you to do a show on this whole, I don't know if you heard about it, this whole Megan Good, Whoopi Goldberg thing. Um, um, uh, have you heard about it? No. I mean, I thought you was going to say about those five police officers um, deleting that young man. But go ahead. What what, what Megan Good and Whoopi doing? So Megan Good and Whoopi, you know, they, they, they have a show out. You know, the show is, you know, the one you couldn't watch for 10 minutes. Um, oh, uh, that is their show. I, you know, I haven't watched it. Just that 10 minutes. You're right. Yes. So she said behind the scenes, her and, her and Whoopi had a conversation about life. And she and Whoopi start having a conversation with her telling her, listen, you know, you can buy, you, you make you make need to make sure that you have your own things, your own property, your own house, yeah, your own things. Right. And this is why she was married. And oh. she said, and she said, Whoopi opened her eyes up to the point where she knew she had to divorce her husband. Did she really say that? Yes, she, she said, said Whoopi opened her opened eyes to to for her to to for her to go ahead and get a divorce because, and she said after she got a divorce, she felt relieved. And she was able to go by her own, like Whoopi, she followed all Whoopi's instructions. She bought a house, she bought property. Um, she she started traveling by herself, you know, because Whoopi is a is a huge component of never marrying. She don't want nobody to be married. And she said this on several occasions, even on The View, Whoopi has said, I don't want, I, I don't choose to be married. I don't want to be married. That's for y'all. Y'all do what y'all want to do. But that's why I don't. That's why I don't have a husband. I don't want a husband. I choose not to have a man. So she's an advocate for women not being married. So her having that conversation with Megan Good triggered something in Megan's mind, and Megan said that led to her divorcing her husband. Okay, but didn't her husband initiate the divorce? Yes. Yes. She, yes, she's. So I don't know. Maybe he lied for her. Maybe. Because but, but, but I've heard since then that somebody is regretting that it happened. Was it him right. or her? I have no idea. I've, I have heard no idea these, but I, I've heard since then that somebody is regretting that they divorced. I don't know who uh -huh. it is. I'm going to look into that and see. But, you know, I'm not I ain't got time for the movie. But Whoopi has been married several times, hasn't she? Yeah, she's been married three times. Caucasian men, right? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. I know at least one of them was. I don't know about all of them. Yeah, Ted Danson was one of them, right? I don't know, but I know she's been married before and she's been married to Caucasian men. At least one. And she got, and she got a daughter out of it. 
Right, uh, right, her, right. No, yeah. Her, her daughter is gorgeous. I, I don't know, you know, Whoopi. I mean, but her daughter is beautiful. I, I, I was like, that, Whoopi, you, that you sure is your child? <laughs> Whoopi, you, who, who, you did that? <laughs> Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg talked her into a divorce. Oh, Kevin C., I know. Isn't that crazy? So how is black women not being married helping black men? I, I don't know. Right. I mean, yeah, we, but but wait a minute. Like I just said, I don't know, Kevin. You might have did this before. I said that Whoopi's husband, at least one of them, was definitely um, a white man, a Caucasian man. So I don't uh -huh. know if she cares as much about um, the black community as we would want her to. Remember, right. I don't know. And you know, stuff. You know, all these things that we do and participate in could have a big influence. So y'all know she was in the color purple, pointing her finger. So maybe. <laughs> She maybe didn't leave that back there. It might have came on with her. So exactly. you never know. She, you know, sometimes you have to get into the road to do the road success, successfully. And maybe she got a little too deep into it. You know, right. um, what's the and, other girl? Monique did. So maybe she got a little too deep into her. So, so. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say this last thing and let you uh, let you finish up your show. Um, so I had an opportunity to sit down with one of my one of the young ladies at my uh, at my job because we had a big town hall. And so we had a we had a huge conversation. It was me versus five women. And I wasn't a battle. It was more of a conversation. But I didn't have enough. No men there to defend me. in. so I had to stand in on that. However, uh, the, the women said she said, I will honestly admit when it comes to dating or being in serious relationships, she said the first time that we argue or have a disagreement. Um, she said, I'm out because relationships shouldn't have that. <gasps> and I said, well, I said, well, you may, I said, ma'am, you know, can I be honest with you? And she said, yeah, sure. I said, you're never going to be married because marriage is ups and downs, honey. You're not going to live an entire life with a person and not have a disagreement. And so many of the other women agreed with her and they were like, yeah, I don't, we don't have time for arguing. It's 2023. Either you own the same page with me or you're not. Mm, but it's definitely her page. Her page, exactly. And so liar, she was bro, a liar. Exactly, exactly. And so she, and also she was like, when I say a dominant, and she was asking me, I, everybody keeps telling me about Andrew Tate. What is it? What is it about him? And I said, well, I told her what he was about, and she said, I don't like when men say they're dominant. They're more dominant than women because women can do very much the same things as far as strength. As far as endurance as men, and so she said, and so, so, so Kid Boss, I had to sit there with a just I had to because I couldn't get I couldn't get black men unfiltered, right? I had to be no, you can't, corporate. you can't, I had, I had to be corporate, right? So, I you know, I was like, ma'am, I said, well, at the end of the day, and I said, 10 years from now, I want to be able to, to call you or reach out to you and see how your marriage is going. I said, because I for as of right now. If you want my, she said, yeah, I want your advice. I said, I don't, I don't think you'll ever get married with that mindset. She said, well, it seems like I'll just probably be by myself for the rest of my life. Oh, they're talking like that's a good spot, right? Yeah, you but she's 28. She's but 28. you know what? I'm glad that you mentioned that because I don't know if you saw the beginning of the show because I was talking about what Lala did over on The Breakfast Club. And what they made some very good points because because of social media, um, they have taken away a big portion of relationship. Uh, you know, because, you know, me and Mr. Balls, we best friends and you and your wife are friends. See, before social media, there was a time when you engaged people, you know, you built a relationship and you knew each other. You wouldn't just have a disagreement and run out because you knew exactly. this person. You you learned who the person was. You trusted the person. You knew how they moved and stuff like that. But now exactly. you don't know because social media has taken so much of that social interaction away. Or I should say that that uh, face to face interaction away. People can be whoever they want to be. I could tell you I fly in the meantime. And you be like, right. you be like, SB going out flying right now. You know, I could be right, anything. Right. And you know, you you get your own perception of who I am. And then a lot of times it just leads into a relationship that is in marriage, but it's not real. So right. you don't have and a what chance did Lala to say? What did Lala, Lala say? I, I saw something today with her on it, but I didn't get a chance to read. I was super busy today. What did she say? She was just basically saying she um, marriage is no longer a goal for anyone anymore. And a lot of it is because of social media. And she said she would never get married again. But she was glad to see that there are a lot of people around her with successful marriages. But it would she would never do it again. And again, this this are things that we talk about that are coming against marriage. You got social media. You got um, it's just not a goal anymore. People can live together. 
and it'd be just okay, which makes no sense to me. But she was just basically saying how marriage is no longer an end goal. But you know, around here, I'm saying marriage is an option because I want all of it. I don't want little bits and pieces because it doesn't make sense to me. Am I, it's not complete. You know, we're well, asking men to cover us, protect us, provide for us. And we're asking women to totally submit, but we don't want to give them. We ain't trying to give them the foundation that covers all this, that, that makes yeah. this make sense. Well, well, you know, Lala left her marriage after her husband, you know, did what he did. So, he, you know, he was wrong as well. But after he did what he did, but however, she thought life was going to be green. Life was going to be green on the other side instead of forgiving her husband and moving forward. And now the reason she's probably saying that because she's in her mid 40s and she knows that her time is that the wall is coming. And, and and she's starting to date. I saw that she's dating this young guy now. Uh, it probably in his late twenties, twenty eight, probably. Mm -hmm. So she, so she's looking. Yeah, she's trying to go back and 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 rehash herself. That dude's gonna get what he want out of her, and he's gonna be out of there. there if there's no, that, especially if he wants marriage. Oh no, she, he's gonna be gone. She said she's not gonna do it anymore. But this is one yeah, thing she did say that kind of did make it was like wow. She said that um somebody said so what you gonna tell your son about marriage? Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. see, she was like, I, I just, we just wasn't a good example for him. Uh, we didn't show him a good example of being married. That's so, wow. <laughs> I know wow. it didn't work for us now, you know, wow. but we're going to try to be the best co-parents that we can be. And he could see the, you know, best version of, but you know, are you going to tell your son to get married? Or are you going to tell him not to? She, I don't think she wow. actually answered that question, but she did say that, that theirs was not the best example. Right. It wasn't the best example. And, and on top of that, Lala, you know, everybody knows Lala went had some surgery. Yeah, come on now. Everybody know. Everybody know Lala ain't that fine for real. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She got that booty done. Come on. Because if you oh, remember she Lala. Did. From, I remember. I'm looking. I'm thinking now. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, because she was on, uh, what's it, VH1 or MTV? And she was 120 pounds soaking wet. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, bang, bang, boom. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Where all this booty and breast come from, Lala? So, I mean, you know, yeah, ain't nothing gonna last when you, you know. I mean, I you, know. you're not you're you're not authentic yourself. You know, right? But you know, you she ain't gonna see it that way. Yeah, she ain't gonna see it that way at all, at all. So, mm -mm. listen. Um, let me read the super chat. Thanks, Kevin. Um, he says, "How is marriage not a goal if people are making these kids and no families? How does the, exactly. how does provision, protection, leadership, and wealth happen? How sweat? You know what? I'm I'm saying the same thing. We playing house. We we're we're giving up everything, but it's not a goal. She just she said this because people are not. You know why? We're looking at social media. We're talking right. about how all of these things are." Um, not all these things against marriage, you know, everything is against marriage, but I'm saying marriage is an option. And I just don't know how we can give men honestly what they want without, you know, being married or being in a committed relationship. You know, I don't, I don't see how it can happen. So, so, security boss is delusion. <laughs> People are delusional. You know why? How is it okay for me to go plant my seed in a woman and she embraces it? But marriage is a bad thing, so it's uh, so basically not a goal. Not a goal. We can we can take it or leave it. It's not just setting yourself up for the things you say you don't want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, right? you wanna, like you... Let's do the okay. money line. Let's let's make sure we get Kevin see the money line. And thank you so much, Kevin, for your hundred twenty Honduran dollar. Thank you for being here, also. Money. So, so, um, so it's, it's, it's basically a have a baby, yeah, have a baby, but no marriage. Yeah, how about that? Who does that, die? Right? Who does that? But apparently, we already seen it. We know what the single mom. We know that. We know it's all a setup. Listen, this brings me to this. I need to let y'all know tomorrow will be the second half of the conflict resolution show. We're gonna be getting into that more and more. We're gonna try to come together because this is all these messages are out here, black man. You know, just like you said, 
the um the men are being blamed of course that they're the leaders they will hold the highest responsibility for where we are this is true but i don't blame them for every action that women display that's impossible right it's impossible we're not going to even so listen y'all take that off the table black man don't say don't don't say every y'all y'all really need to get a baseline of what right. because if not y'all gonna fight against that all night long <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because 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 but yeah, because the other night as I, I I jumped on the panel because there were no men to defend that they weren't defending it. So I said, let me get let me hop on here. Uh, I had no intentions, but I jumped on. Uh, and there was a, a one man on there that's going to be on the on the panel tonight that said, you know, the women are twerking because of the men. The women are out here sleeping on all these multiple men because of the men. The men are this. The men ain't taking control. The men ain't doing this, and the men and everything. It's because of the men. If men do right, women would get in line. There wouldn't be no twerking. There wouldn't be no, you know. And one of the things he said, also said was, you know, if you go on a date, men are not pulling guns on little boys no more saying, hey, listen, my daughter about to come back here, you know, like she left. And I said, wait a minute. I said, well, as being the youngest person probably on this panel tonight, when I was in my dirty days, uh, a man told me that my daughter about to come back to here to look in the way I sent her out. I said, "Yes, sir, you right." And I had sex with her while her head was on a silk, <laughs> on a on a satin pillow, and I took her right back <laughs> to her daddy. You put it on a satin pillow, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, hold your head, baby. You know, so that's not gonna stop nothing. But we'll discuss it tonight. We'll discuss it tonight. No, it doesn't stop anything. But what the man was trying to do is put fear in you. But black man, understand this: just because we can't, we can't. OK, look, you are a man and you're the head. You still want to be the covering because you've said it many times. You're going to be the covering for what goes on in your house, your daughter, daughters and your sons until your daughter find a husband. So you exactly. got to do all you can. But we all know at a certain age, our children are adults and they're yeah. they're now responsible for their own actions and what they do. They got to have consequences for it. So, you know, we have the conversation, but understand it. There's no absolutes, but uh, the men, the men not knowing who they are is um, or not walking it out does contribute it to the foul behavior. But we're in a time, though. But listen to this. Right. Hey, 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 what's going on with you? He said, I believe in long term relationships, but marriage don't make logical sense to me. Listen, um, A.L., you know, you and I have had this conversations for a very long uh -huh. time. I've, I've shared with you the tax breaks. I've shared with you, um, maybe I didn't say this part, but like if something should to, would have happened to you, the fact that your long term partner or your wife can actually come back into the room and make decisions. That's what a wife does. I also shared with you the blessings that marriage actually that are bestowed upon marriage, because in this, at this point, this is my belief. A person's living in marriage is doing and living in order. And that is to be blessed. I believe that. And I'm a witness to that. It's happened to me so many times. Now, that's not something I can share with you. That's something that is sight unseen. But this is my faith. And you may not have that. Yeah, but um, that. it's a real thing because you're yeah. living in, in order and it will be blessed. Outside of that, then um, there's a lot more things that a marriage that I, you said logical sense. And sometimes faith and logic cannot live together. So mm. there you go. Yeah, Security boss, I want to know this. And I'm going to ask this last question. I want to know how we can um, go against this. Um, these women that signed this, uh, you know, thing for this black man defined to be removed from all social media sites. Um, I think that uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're talking way too fast. What black man? So Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, did a documentary oh, about. Okay, black I men. remember. Okay. Okay. It was a great documentary. Right. And so so the women got the black women got together. The, soror the, so the sororities got together and some of the other women got together and they said, listen, we're not having this because we're not discussing what black men do negatively. We're not talking about the black men and domestic violence. So if you're not going to tell both sides of a black man. Then they signed this petition and they had security boss. They had it removed. You can't find it nowhere now. They removed it from Hulu. They removed it from Discovery. They removed it from uh, Prime Video. You can't find it. It's, you can't find it on YouTube. Nowhere. No clips. No nothing. All you can find right now is the trailer. They re the women had it removed 
because it showed that men and and just to give a quick synopsis, it showed the men that were that fit the CDC went to the CDC, sat down with a person that works for the government, and they said black men are in the home more. Over fifty percent of men are in the home with their children. The 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 men going to jail. The, the, it has decreased by 33, 34%. Men are graduating college at a better rate than they are going to jail. Like that, and when it comes to domestic violence, how women are more uh, aggressive and physically harmful to men now than men are to women. She had it together. I know, I believe, I've heard right. that. I've heard about it. No. Okay, so what's your question? See if what can be done. Yeah, what can be done that, that, that these women these women have too much power what can be done where a group of people like yourself myself because some other content creators some well-known people we got to find a way to get it back mm. that thing shined that thing shined a huge light on the positive things of a of a, of a man of a black man that, 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 that requires some investigation because um I, I didn't know that happened but you know there's a lot of negativity uh, ne negative videos out there about black men so i don't know um, but you know what? Maybe maybe we should fight just as hard to get rid of the negativity. Why don't we yeah. do that? Why don't we do that? Yep. Can't say nothing positive without, to, about a black man without trying to add something negative. You're not going to add the negativity. We'll take it away from you. So listen, hold on for a minute, black man. You OK? I'm, I'm, I'm I want to answer a couple of questions that I saw in the comment section. Can you go up to uh, I think it was Jones. Right there. Jones and for more. Um, Joseph Amar, thank you so much for being here. It says tax breaks is the reason that men don't divorce. However, they check out of the marriage. Listen, I am so glad you said that because I am the marriage person. <laughs> I talk about being married all the time. Let me tell you something. Um, a marriage is what you make it. If you want to have a successful marriage, I am not talking about happiness. I'm talking about successful marriage. If you want to have that marriage where you and your wife are hanging from the chandeliers, loving each other, you patting on her butt, she kissing you or whatever you want. You got to feed into that marriage. You can't check out. If a person checks out the marriage, it's because they wanted to check out. If your wife got a concern or if she's doing something that you don't want her to do, it's up to you to go up to that woman and say, hey, babe, what's wrong with you? Women, if your husband is checking out or you're not looking the same anymore, let's go with the checking out part first. It's up to you to go up to him, baby. What's going on? Let's talk about it. You gotta want to be married. Married ain't something, marriage is not something you can set up on the the, the what I always say, the banister. You can't set it up on the fireplace and just let it sit and think it's gonna work itself out. You can't put your marriage on auto. You cannot do this. I realize we were taught that. There's right. some part of marriage that is duty, but there's other part. The most of it is what you make it. If you want to have a loving, caring, um, sex filled relationship with your mate, you do it. You don't go create nothing or you go create something with somebody else to try to fix the part that you're lacking with the one that you actually married. That's a wrong answer. I have no idea why it's so hard for us to love the one that we marry. Why is that hard, black man? Why is it so hard? Uh, it, it, because because people become complacent. So what? And they become and hold on, yeah, they become too comfortable. And let me tell you what they do. They start listening to friends. Whoopi, matter of fact, just perfect example. Whoopi Goldberg and, and Megan Good. We start listening to people that we think have value when they don't have value. And they and they and they devalue you and you'll be divorced and they and that person will be having sex with your husband. How about this? In your marriage, the only friend you got is your spouse. Exactly. That's the it, only it, friend you got. That's the only person you should be talking to. Now, if you and your spouse decide y'all gonna go to a counselor or seek advice from someone else, that's what you do. Single girlfriends do not get to pour into your life. Single boyfriends right. or men friend don't get to pour into your life or speak into your relationship. Anybody that's right. single shouldn't be saying nothing to a person that's married about what they should do. That's and, awesome. and you know what? And, and you know what, security boss, before I leave, I'm driving home right now. I'm on the highway, as you guys can probably see out my window. There's a young lady that lives in my neighborhood with her grandmother. Her grandmother's trying to raise her because her mama dropped off. She's walking down this highway right now. Walking down the highway? You mean like an interstate? She, yeah, she's 16. Watch this. I'm, I just pulled over. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. You, you okay? Where are you going? To the store? Your grandma know where you are? You know you're too young to be out here. You look so familiar. I'm 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 Marlena's dad. Your friend's dad. <laughs> you're, you're out here walking. Oh, yes, this... honey. Okay. Walking. All right, Vicky, you shouldn't be walking out here by yourself. Yeah. 
I don't really got a choice. All right. Well, listen, call Marlena, and me and Marlena will come pick you up if you need a ride, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. <sighs> that, see? <laughs> She's out here walking by 16 years old, just walking down the street by herself, just walking down the highway. As you can see, we're on the highway, security boss. I know, and you know that, you know, um, we're not a protected, I'm not saying black men, I'm talking about period, women, period. The thing, they've been disappearing. <laughs> Things are happening to women. I'm not talking about yeah. black men not protecting us. I'm not talking about that. Y'all don't, don't, don't get you in a bunch. I'm just saying women are not being protected by anybody. You know, women are being kidnapped in the in the story the other day. A woman was working in Lowe's. This man tried to kidnap this woman from working in Lowe's. She was working. Yep, exactly. exactly. You know, so things are happening to women because we're not covered. That young girl is not covered, mm -mm. and anything can happen. So again, Jones and for more. I am the one that talks about marriage. I love being married. Um, marriage takes effort. And if you don't have the effort or think you may run out of the zeal to put into your marriage, don't get into it because it does require work. But it's always funny to me how people will put so much energy into their their Michael Jordan. I could ask like something about Michael Jordan right now. And most of the men in the comment section could tell can give me a rundown on Michael Jordan when he came into the NBA. How many championships he run won how many rings all of that they can give me a rundown but i ask you what's your your wife's birthday and you'd be like uh, uh oh mm -hmm. or i say when did you get married and you'd be like uh, 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 uh what what year anniversary is this uh, hmm. you know won't give her but a little bit but let me say michael jordan put that same energy into the woman that you with it can be good remember you married her initially you married her you loved her you saw something women you know, a lot of times women fall out the, they don't see the men as sex objects anymore. So they don't have as much sex with them as, you know, marriage goes on. Men, find out what's wrong with your woman. Put that energy into her to find out what is going with you on with you, what you don't like about me no more. What am I doing wrong? And then you can find out that you wouldn't that same guy that courted her before you got married. Now you right. got, you know, bills are here. Now I'm working hard, whatever, whatever. So y'all can fix it. Women need security and stability. They need to know that you're there for them. They need that. And they'll give you the world. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that we're pouring into the right people and not those people that are out there in the street. You can make your yeah. marriage what it is. You just have to, you just have to do it. You have to invest keep, in your marriage. I'm going to say this before I go. Keep people out your marriage and keep your marriage away from people. And, um, you know, it, it, it'll work out every time. I think that sometimes seclusion and disconnecting is the best thing ever. Um, yeah, sometimes you have to do that to make sure you got a good foundation. You absolutely do. Yep, yep. Because some and there's nothing wrong like with that. That should be your bestie. Your your spouse should be your bestie. You, anytime you have a problem, it needs to be discussed right there. And if you ain't got to that point, you need to slow down until you can get to that point. <sighs> exactly. Well, Secure Box, you know I love you, girl. Love you too. Listen, to, this has I'm, been a pleasure. Y'all, I'm going to tune in tonight. Make sure you shout it out one more time for us, and then I'm going to let you go. Yes. Our Black Men Unfiltered Network tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we have the barbershop open uh, tonight. And um, the, the title tonight is Me and Other Problem, Prove Me Wrong. Uh, we're going to have some real good voices on tonight to to discuss this. So, guys, come on over. Uh, we may open up the lines if, if it permits that, but if the conversation gets too good, just, you know, cheer us on in the chat. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Subscribe over there, too. I would I would appreciate it. Y'all, look, keep an open mind. Keep the dialogue going and just relax. You know, let 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 whatever's being said, you know. What you call it? Uh, ring throughout the panel, you know, let let slow down and have a conversation so we can hear you because it's going to be a good one. Sounds like I'll be there in the background. I may be in the comment section, but I want you all to keep it going. All right. And fellas, I just got our work. Uh, now I got to go in and clock in in my second job, go help with these kids. Oh, I said, what so, do you mean? So, your second job. <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, make sure these kids are good, get a wife a little break, and then I can get on the show tonight comfortably without her saying, he help me with nothing. All right? So go so help listen, your wives. So listen, wait a minute, Black, Black Man, I know you get ready to go, but Jones in for, for more says, so people should shut off from your show then. Um, I'm not sure what I said that make people shut off from my show, but whatever you need to do to make your marriage great, Shut off on this show. Yeah, if, yeah. If that's that's fine. I've already said what I needed to say. So if yeah, your marriage is, is sitting on the shelf and you're not feeding into it, 
shut off from this show because I'm definitely on social media. Find you a counselor locally. I want you to be married and I want you to be successful. So do it. A matter of fact, a matter of fact, hell, it may be, it may, you may have to have a dyslexic moment and do it backwards. Don't shut off from the show. Cut everything else off but positive things. And Secure the Boss preaches marriage every time she go live. So if your marriage is in the shambles and it's about to fall over in Lake Minnetonka, you may want to listen to Secure the Boss because she may be able to help you. No, he's just trying to prove a point, but that point doesn't apply because I want you to be married. Listen, Security Boss is going to be married and her and Mr. Boss going to be 27 years, 30 years in doing their own thing. I want y'all to be successful and covered just the same. So whatever you yeah, got to do, beloved. do it. I, I'm there with you. I, re re I prefer you come back three years from now with a success story and be like, SB, I heard you say this, boo, 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 and we got off of this and this is what happened. I'd be like, whoa, thank you so much. Do you mind sharing it? <laughs> All right, black man, go help your wife. I'm with T. Shaw right here now. Give the wife a break. Love you and see you tonight. See y'all tonight. Peace. All right, guys. Listen, this has been a terrific freestyle Friday. And Jones and for you and Jones and for more. I'm sorry. I appreciate you so much. Um, I love the I love the interactions. So understand. I'm here for it because I want people to understand what's going on and what needs to happen. I want women to be covered and I want husbands to be married and be coverings for their women and be an authority and and take this thing and make sure y'all do what y'all supposed to do with it. I really do. So listen, now we're going over the black man tonight. It's nine o'clock Eastern time, which um, would be eight o'clock central. That's going to be a good conversation. We're not blaming the men for everything because we already know ain't no man told a woman to twerk and half y'all don't care for it anyway, but we're definitely going to support. Also, Tomorrow, Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, conflict resolution, y'all. Conflict resolution. I'm going to be here. Y'all know I got a star-studded panel. So be here with me, guys. 3 o'clock Eastern. I will see y'all then. Um, What else did I want to say? Thank y'all. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know what my subscriber count is now, but 10,000, we're real close. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good night. See you soon. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. You drink it all to Bacardi. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love? I don't got it. You screaming, stay. Please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance we roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door But instead I'm alone and completely unsure And even though he's screaming out with the best of intentions I don't get it Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts ain't too scared to usher off. Sorry, Ma, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We were poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.